Hey everybody, we're back. For those of you that can't recognize this that's behind me because everything is off of it, this is a 2020 BMW S1000RR. Now, we're developing some parts for it. Um, the, we're actually setting it up primarily to race in the super stock class only because it's here and we're creating parts and we're creating the parts that are going to work good in super stock. For those of you who don't know what super stock is, basically it's a stock wheelbase class. You can, you're not allowed to modify the engine at all. You're allowed to modify the chassis, the gearing, uh, clutch modif modifications are regulated pretty tightly. Certain things you can do, certain things you can't. But there is close to to drag racing a, a stock motorcycle as you get as you can get. The class has been very popular this year, even though we had some delays uh, due to COVID. Uh, but what, what I'm going to do here, if you watched any of our videos back from 2010, when the S1000RR came on the scene, we jumped all over it, man. I mean, it was a fast bike. Even though it was new, they had really done their homework. The engine was crazy reliable. Um, and, you know, I used to tell people back then, it's like, guys, think about this. The bike makes as much horsepower as a Hayabusa, but it's 100 pounds lighter. It's really hard to, to outrun that. So over the years, the bike has progressed. BMW concentrates highly on, on safety, on rider safety. They don't drag race, so they make changes to the bike that make all the sense in the world if you're on the road or if you like to drag race. Um, but if you like to compete, and this is the super stock class. This is a national level. People come from everywhere to race in this class. If you want to compete on a basically stock motorcycle and drag race it at a, at a high competitive level, they've done some things that just don't really work out, which it's our job in the aftermarket world to fix that. And I wanted to just put this tech talk together because I'm going to do the clutch right now. I'm going to show you what we're going to, what we, what we're doing, and I'm also going to mention a couple things about the S1000RR, about the 2020, for those of you who don't know, and uh, just sort of educate you as we go at, while we work. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Okay, before we get started on installing our conversion, I wanted to mention some, a little something about this bike. There's an old saying, power is nothing without control. That is especially true uh, when you're drag racing. And the faster the bike is, the more difficult it's gonna be to control if the rider can't modulate wheel height and acceleration, etc. Now, what does fast bike mean? We roll this thing up on the dyno with no, with pump gas, nothing special, nothing done, bone stock, and you guys have seen our dyno numbers before. So check this out, 195 horsepower, completely stock, just rolled it up there and, and made a run. By the time we're finished working our magic, this thing's gonna be really, really fast, so this clutch is gonna matter. Back to that thing that I was talking about, uh, that sometimes the BMW does. You look at this dyno chart, you'd be like, oh man, I'm gonna run out and grab me one of those right now. That's gotta be super, super fast when you get a pipe on it and get it, get it de-restricted. Is it even restricted? That's a lot of power. Well, let me come over here and show you what happens to your, your real fast bike in third gear. So, we always talk about Big Brother, right? You always have a combination of, of Big Brother, emissions, noise, etc. pulling, 44 horsepower out at 7,500 RPM is really, really drastic. So the gentleman who owned this bike said, you know, I took it to my local track day. I was so happy. I'm running around. Everything's great. He's like, I got pulled by a 600 on a third gear quarter. He's like, there's something wrong. This thing's broken. Anyway, we did a lot of homework. And if you own a 2020, you can do a search on it. It's really, really restricted. Once it gets de-restricted, it's going to be able to run. That's why you haven't seen any of them in the in the super stock class. The, the clutch doesn't work. They don't make the correct power yet. There's a whole lot of things that has to be sorted out. And uh, we've been working on it a little for the last year, but it just takes time. And COVID has really messed some of that up. So anyway, when we are finished, this thing is going to be a rocket ship. So getting the clutch right 
is what we're going to have to do and I want to show you how we're going to do that now. If you look at the table, <laughs> you're, you're going to say, Brock, man, what is all this stuff? I, I'm not really sure I know how to change my own clutch in a 2020 BMW, much less put all this stuff in. Trust me, that's why we're here. Basically what we're gonna do, I'm gonna pull the stock clutch out of that so you'll be able to see, see how it works and we'll talk about its functioning in a little bit. And then we have had to source parts from all over to, to make this happen. And I, I mean, to the point where we couldn't even get a new, uh, we couldn't even get a new nut from BMW. So I borrowed one from a friend um, we've got this is used stuff that we found when our conversion kits already we will have all new stuff for you and all new parts and you can use this video to get it all installed so we are going to be uh, you know getting around oil here so I'm going to go ahead and glove up and then as far as as far as things you're going to need um, most people know Loctite blue most people know Loctite red I like the blue but if it's something that I do not absolutely positively do not want to come loose because it could cause me a lot of problems, I use red. Well, the problem with red is a lot of times you have to heat it to get it to get it taking or to get it off. And that's not real convenient and especially in a clutch application like this where you really don't want to be getting a torch near your bike, you, you know, if you can't if you're at the racetrack working in a hurry, you got to replace something. So we're going to use this uh, Loctite orange it's new, uh, at least new to us, I don't know how long it's been around. It has the strength of red, but you can get it apart with regular hand tools and you don't need heat. So if you don't have any of this, pick your some up. And uh, we're also gonna need a little bit of oil because we are gonna be messing with the clutch. Let's go over here and pull the OEM clutch apart. For the purpose of this Tech Talk, your bike does not have to be ripped all down like this thing. Uh, you would want to either pull off your lower or what we've done in the past. If you're in a big hurry, if you're to race and you got to change your, or adjust your clutches, whatever, you can usually take the screw out here and pull it back to at least gain access, uh, quick access. But we've got all this open for you here now. And so you can see exactly what's going on. The tools you are going to need. BMW loves their Torx. Uh, this is a T30 Torx, a 13 millimeter wrench. Crazy enough, I guess I figure you have a half inch at home. Uh, five millimeter socket, uh, or socket uh, Allen, and a 27 millimeter socket for the clutch hub nut. So to get started here, this is really, it's really simple stuff. You just pull, pull this little cover back, pull that nut off, and then you have to sort of pull it back here, but I'll get this, this nut back, move it forward, because you're gonna to have to pull, I, I don't know if you can see here, but you've gotta pull the end of the cable out of, this, out of its uh, holder, and you really just have to push forward. It's like a throttle cable, if you've ever messed with bikes before, it's simple stuff. All right, so now that we have that, that done, all right, so we're gonna pull off the clutch cover here. Uh, ain't nobody got time for that. Hold on, one second. I have no problem using power tools to disassemble, I don't like using them to assemble. All right, we'll speed things up. Woo! We'll speed things up here. All right, we are ready to pull the cover. So what you have to do, they give you a little, they give you a little grip here. You can sort of grab up here, and the whole thing, the whole idea, you want to pull this back. Get that cover broken loose. Now, one thing I want to warn you about: don't crank this thing back. There's a little spring in here and you can actually go past the spring and cause yourself all kinds of trouble. But if you just just move it back a little, you'll feel you'll feel it come free and then you have to pull it straight out. This is this is a very strange clutch arrangement. You can replace the gasket. We reuse them over and over and over again. Uh, that that's your call. I'll go ahead and set that there and then uh, this is what's called an assist clutch. And the thing about an assist clutch, and we've touched on this before with Jigsilla, the OEMs are using it more and more and more because it requires less lever pressure and you can actually get more clamping force. Well, the problem is, is that if you're drag racing, it's the same as just putting a, an old school lockup clutch on your bike. As soon as this thing, your lever starts to move, 
this thing locks up, there's no more control, and the bike bogs or wheelies or does any of some of the bad stuff that, that they're known for. And actually, I don't want to mess that up. I'm just going to set that back. So, well, what we're going to do is, uh, is eliminate this. And now, one of the things you're going to watch, and if you notice, this thing only has three springs. I'll, I'll pull this out, and you have to watch. You sort of have to take each, because it's, it's one plate now, you have to take these out a little at a time. See how it starts to cock. And you know, we all make the assumption that if you want to go back to stock, if you're a road racer or whatever, you don't want to damage your parts. So, so if you look at this, you've got three itty bitty springs is all that it needs your to for the when the pressure plate moves because you're not using the spring pressure anymore to compress the clutch pack and I'll show you what I mean there uh, it's more mechanical leverage than anything else so we're gonna set this aside pull this out they have a very strange arrangement here BMW I've never seen this in a clutch before you got little pockets here but that would help you if you wanted bigger springs or if you wanted to change your 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 uh, installed height you can change those things around uh, what I'm gonna do but let's just pull these off and I want to sort of show you what's happening here several several things happen you've got these little ramps right here and those ramps go and they engage right here so when the bike is moving forward it turns on that ramp and pushes the pressure plate in so well actually it pulls it in in the past you'd use your clutch spring pressure to push it in and you wouldn't have any mechanical advantage this mechanical advantage allows it to compress very very tight then when you downshift you actually and, and then that's where these springs would come in more if you had stiffer springs you would get more rear wheel bark if with these lightweight weight springs you get less but you can actually tune because uh, as, as you're slowing down, the pressure get, moves off the other way and, and the pressure plate comes out this way. So hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna leave this right now. And it was, it was installed like this. I'm just gonna lay those down right there because to make this, to make this easy for you, we wanna keep all this stuff in, in order. Now, BMW makes a special tool that you can buy for uh, oh, way too much, I'm sure. Sorry, I'm not a big fan of BMW's retail pricing structure for motorcycles. Simple deal. You can either, you can put a, a rag over it. The old trick, just press here. All right. The parts we are no longer going, going to need. I'm just going to set over here to the right. Well, actually, that's not true. We are going to reuse the, uh, the the throw out here. And in order to get that out, it's very simple. You just push it in. This is a very simple idea. I'm, I'm really surprised that it didn't get complicated, overly complicated. So we're, we are going to reuse this and we'll reuse this O-ring. I'm going to set it over here for now. And then we'll pull the nut off. We will not be reusing this nut. And now we're just gonna pull, where we call it stripping the input shaft. Just pull everything out, all right? When you pull it out, there's a, a little washer that's gonna stick to the back of it. You are going to put that back. And then, now we're just gonna go, go ahead and take the clutch out here, just like this. And there's one little piece that's usually a pain to get off, gets stuck on there from the oil. One moment, I need another tool. All right. So you pull this off and we will be reusing that part and parts of the stock clutch. Let me sort of show you here. I'll pull these things out. All right, so basically what I'm talking about here is when the ramps are, are putting pressure, so if, let's say I've got this back, way back here, all right? When the pressure is being applied to the ramps, they come in and compress it, right? And then when you downshift, it loosens it up by loosening the clutch. That's what reduces wheel hop and bark and all the rest of that stuff. So anyway, great stuff. If you're a road racer, this is a wonderful, wonderful tool. If you like your bike to launch hard from a dead stop, this is not what you want. And it doesn't matter what kind of racing you do. Your bike doesn't know where its wheels are spinning as we've talked about so many times. All right.
right, so I'll just set this stuff over here, get it out of the way, and then I'll grab the parts that we're going to need to rearrange this clutch pack. Okay, the first thing we're gonna, gonna do is address the clutch pack itself. We're using the OEM clutch pack. This is exactly how it came. It came this way, and we're going to be replacing some of the other fibers and steels that were no longer needed. Uh, the way this, this is arranged is you have you have that plate and then you have this smaller plate that's actually larger in diameter. Those won't fit in what we're going or what we're doing. And then you also have this, this plate. So basically all we're going to do, the way this came apart is like this. We are going to take these out. We're going to grab these and we won't need that any longer. Now, I get asked questions about clutch stack height all the time. People, people really don't understand what stack height is uh, and what it affects. So uh, just in general, just, just, just as a ballpark. If you've got your clutch and you're drag racing, you're drag racing, you're drag racing, you're gonna get wear on the clutch plates. So how many plates do we have here? I don't know, let's just say 10 for the sake of argument. Well, what if you're drag racing and you wear 10 thousandths off of your fiber plates, let's say. Well, if you've got 10 of them, then your stack height got 100 thousandths thinner. What's that going to affect? 100 thousandths, if all things being equal, if you've got stock springs and your clutch all of a sudden is 100 thousandths smaller, you don't have nearly as much spring pressure compressing it. Now, the way we do it, <laughs> we give you ample spring pressure so that it doesn't matter if this wears, you're still gonna have plenty. You're gonna have plenty of spring pressure, doesn't matter if you're drag racing, if you're land speed racing, you're gonna have enough spring pressure because that's how we set up our springs. And I'll get, I'll get to, uh, to more on that later. But for right now, just for a reference point, grab my trusty calipers here. Just for a reference point, when you go to replace your clutch, we're just going to sort of push it together here. All right, so we've got 49.05 millimeters, or uh, we'll call it 1.93. So when you go to replace your clutch, you're going to want it about 1.93. Does it have to be 1.930? No. Like we just said, we take a hundred thousandths off this, your bike will still work. Will your clutch work as well? It might slip a little bit more because you have less spring pressure. Also, the other thing that happens, and we're going to talk about this too, guys like to soak their clutches overnight, and that's great. If you want to do that, if you think that it's soaking it overnight is the best thing in the whole wide world, that's fine. But you have to realize that the fiber plates will absorb the oil and they'll swell. So if I dunk these in oil, it's going to get a little bigger. Is that a problem? No, same deal. Your bike might creep a little bit, but it's not really the end of the world. So the other thing I want to know, I want you to notice. <laughs> Did you see how high in the engine this clutch is and how dry this, this bike's got oh, it's got it went through the dealer uh, it went through the dealer de-restriction. It's got over 600 miles on it. But look at those plates. They look like they just came out of the box. So one of the things that we are going to do, since we, this bike is going to get drag raced, we are going to oil the plates when they go in. If you're road racing, you don't need to worry about that as, as much. But if you're drag racing, having a, a, a smooth oiled clutch is critical. You know, we can we can come up with all the greatest parts in the world, but if you put in a, put a dry clutch in, it's really going to cause you problems. And that, that sort of reminds me. The most powerful bikes in the super stock class are Ducatis. They make more horsepower than everybody. The mile an hour they throw up on the board shows it, but they have not won a race. They're gonna have a really hard time winning a race because the Panigale V4 has a dry clutch. Dry clutches are great for road racing. They're not good for drag racing. And if you don't have a good clutch for drag racing, your rider can't do his job. So um, anyway, we're setting this thing up to drag race, so I will go and get the parts that we're going to need. Just for just for a reference, this came out that way. I'm going to lay it down just like that. Let me grab some parts, and I'll be right back. All right, so we use a combination of OEM parts and aftermarket parts. Uh, this particular OEM part comes with studs pre-installed. We are going to be changing them to studs that work in conjunction with our springs and what we call top hats 
uh, which allow us to shim the clutch spring pressure wherever we want it. So the first thing you're going to have to do is just sort of take these out. And we won't be using these. All right, so now we're going to be installing our studs as always before you can, and you can see the residual blue Loctite that they had in here. As always, we're gonna clean this up and we're gonna clean up the studs with some brake cleaner before we put on our glue because glue doesn't stick to grease and old Loctite. I will be right back. Never hurts to clean your threads out a little bit too. All right, got cleaned up real good. You know, you can get in there and clean out all the rest of the Loctite. Man, I, I just don't mess with it. If you're that guy, go for it. And then we're just gonna put a drop of this orange because this stuff is is for real. So a little drop there. All right. Now, screw them in. And you you can feel it. If, you, if you've got too much Loctite in a hole or something, just pull it back apart. These are screwing in real nice. I'm, sort of surprised. Yeah, that one's a little tighter, but it's not hurting anything. All right, so the torque spec on these studs is 15 foot-pounds. The problem is it's just not really easy to hold this. I mean, you could go put it in a vise. If you've got a spare BMW S1000RR input shaft laying around, you could just go ahead and shove it in there and, to hold it. I can tell you, this Loctite's gonna hold it down real nice, so we're going to go with this torque spec. I can count on the number of fingers on anybody's hand who has their hand closed, how many times I've had one of these come out. They, they've got, listen, even if, they, even if they weren't all the way tight, they've got a spring that, that puts tension on them. I've never seen one of these come out. I've been doing this for a really, really long time. So we're gonna clear out the Loctite here, make sure everything's good. Do not need a bunch of spare Loctite running around. All right, so there's that. This is going to go like this. So you've got more ramps, right? So that, that goes in like that, all right? And then because we don't want the ramps, we're using a, a, one of our uh, clutch mods, really simple deal. And we're using a nut that goes with all this. That, that other nut wouldn't work with this. Now, because we don't have a new nut, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna use a, an, an old one. These marks are because BMW will put, put the clutch nut on and stake them yet again. If you're that guy, go ahead and stake it. I'm not that guy. I need to be able to get this stuff in and out quickly at the racetrack in my, Oh geez, 40 years of doing this, I had one clutch hub nut come off. Didn't cause any problem. My clutch just came loose and the, and the bike wouldn't go. The reason it came loose is because it was manufactured incorrectly, didn't have enough thread depth, and I had so much spring pressure on a lockup that it just yanked it off the end of the shaft. Any other time, have never had one come out. So anyway, this is gonna go like this. And now we have to switch pressure plates that match all this and that's where, um, go grab my throw out over here. That's where this little dude comes in. So we're just gonna use it and this will come pre-assembled. You won't have to mess with that bearing. So we're gonna press this in here. Well, press it falls in. And then put the O-ring over top of it, press it down here. There's a little groove that the O-ring falls in. Let me grab another finger real quick. And once you, once you press it down into that groove, press no change -o, not gonna, not gonna move. Okay, now we're gonna go, you know what, we'll just go ahead and install this right now. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put our inner basket in, or inner hub or inner basket. The terms are, are uh, they're used in the same context. If, you're, if you've ever wondered what a slipper clutch does, we showed you what it does there. On this particular one, you can see, now it doesn't have the clamp ramp, is that what it would be called? Um, but it does have the slipper ramp, and we're going to disable that with our clutch mod. So let me show you what we're gonna do here. So this assembles the same as the, the stock one that we just pulled out. Get the, the splines locked up. Now, all right, so that's where it was slipper clutching before. Now we add our mod. 
and this nut, and I'll show you, this is pretty cool. As soon as we do that, no more, no more slip, right? So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Yet again, BMW makes a special tool. <laughs> We're not gonna buy the special tool. We're just gonna use what we've got. And for this, I'm actually gonna just grab a shop rag because one of the things I like to do after we get it tightened down, we wanna make sure that it spins nice and freely. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and just get this, hold this real good. are done spinning real nice that's what we want all right next we will reinstall the clutch now what I'm gonna do here um, am I gonna soak these overnight no I don't have time for that I'm not messing with it I'm gonna put it in now if I <laughs> if I oil them and put them in and it sits overnight it's sort of the same isn't it all right so the first thing we want to do this flat plate the it's flat goes in first this spring, see the ramp here on our, <laughs> this, this complicates some folks, on our clutch cushions, the spring goes like this. When it's being used as a judder spring, if it made a point, the point would face in towards the engine. All right, now we can go here, grab some oil. I'm just gonna take, run our Allison, less than zero, yes. This 200 plus horsepower when we're done machine will run less than zero weight oil. And then I'm just gonna come over here and just oil it down. Now, a lot of guys have been asking about these notches. You know, some guys line up all the notches. I'm a little OCD sometimes. So sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't worry about it. If I'm at the racetrack, I promise you I don't worry about it because I just need to get down the track. And if that does anything, I can't tell you what it would be. But it's pretty cool. On this particular bike, you've got little windows so you can see them. We're gonna put that in. Steels, rounded edge, facing in. Same deal, wow, look how dry. That's just amazing. And what you'll see some guys do, have you ever, some, some guys, before they do their burnout, they'll lay the bike way over and pump their clutch. They're trying to get any oil that would be down below this area up into this clutch. Good luck. Um, <laughs> you don't have to lay the bike all the way on its side. Some bikes are better than others. If the clutches aren't that high, that will help. The oil that oils this clutch actually comes through this input shaft. It comes back, it sprays, in, in this berry and then it sloshes and you can see these holes here. It sloshes, this is all spinning and it flings the oil out. That's how your clutches get oiled. All right, so same view. We'll go ahead and line up our little notch here. Put that in. And then if you notice, some of the plates are dimpled, some of them aren't. Look in your manual. I, I think a lot of guys, the uh, retail price on one of these clutches is like $600. So most of the people that I, even though we're big OEM clutch fans, I actually use GSXR plates in our, in our 2010s. And we have instructions on how to do that. I'll, I'll, I'll give you all a link. But there's also some aftermarket clutches out there. Uh, there's one brand called uh, Track King, which I have personally never used, but we have customers that swear they work as well as OEM at a fraction of the cost. Not a plug, just info. And all I'm, I'm doing, you know, I could dunk this in, I could, I could put it in a bag, dump it in oil, dunk, dunk the whole thing in oil. I just like to make sure that there's, you know, that they're oiled uniformly. That's all, that's why I do them single like this. Been doing it for years, seems to work out. Okay, we are to the infamous last clutch plate. Does it go in the same as the others? Does it get twisted one, uh, one notch over? I have tried it both ways. I promise I don't know the difference. Only reason I usually twist the only the last plate. If you twist any of the other ones up in here, it'll get caught in a pocket. You won't be able to get the clutch together. If you do get it together, you're only gonna have a couple plates compressed and the clutch will slip like mad. Um, so anyway, only the last plate. Instead of going here, we're gonna rotate it like this and we are good to go. Now we are ready to talk static spring pressure. What is static spring pressure? Well, I showed you how the one that we took out is using mechanical advantage. We don't have mechanical advantage. So 
what what that means is is the only thing that's compressing this clutch are our springs so let me show you what i'm talking about over here all right we're going to give a super quick lesson on springs we've got other videos out there that show uh, what we do with our springs basically we created our own Brox Performance spring to work in conjunction with our top hats. And what that allows us to do, you can put the spring in just like this, or if you want to compress the spring to make more pressure, you put a spacer. And we offer a variety of spacers here. I'm not gonna go into all of them, but the whole idea behind that is, is let's say you're uh, the type of rider that likes really light spring pressure. Uh, you don't want a lot of force on your clutch. Well, then you would just put it in right like that. If you go drag racing, you think, you think, no, you know, if I just had a little bit more spring pressure, I might be able to get a, a, be a better 60 foot. Well, then we've got these little thin, they're uh, 25 thousandths shims. Of course, I got stuff on them. Um, you just put one, at, one under each spring or one under three of the springs, whatever you want to do. And we don't have this bike, uh, we don't have the chart figured out for this bike just yet. But if you look here, no shim, additional spring force of course is zero. If you add the thinner spring, you're gonna get three more pounds. You've got six springs for a total of 318 pounds. And you can just keep going up. If you wanted more pressure, you can go to that 420 there, but there is a limit. And when I say there's a limit, there's something called coil bind. And what that means is, is that once we compress these together, you're gonna have a certain amount of room in between the coils for it to move. Well, if you put too much spring uh, shim in there, it's gonna clamp this solid. And on the old BMWs, anything over 180 thousandths additional, you would get into coil bind. So you were really, uh, you were really locked there. On this particular bike, you can go 240, which means you can take one of our, one of our 180 shims, pretty easy to see, and then throw a uh, 062 to it. And where 240 is our limit. Now we got 239, so that's about as much as you could put in. If you don't want that much, just use a different combination. So anyway, we've got guys that swear on this setup. We got guys who swear on this one. What is the best for you? That's really easy. The whatever makes you comfortable and allows you to control your bike the best so that you can go quicker. Gearing comes into play, suspension comes into play, rider weight comes into play. There's all kinds of factors. The only thing that matters is this magic number for Joe Blow number A the best for Joe Blow number B? No, no, I know B's aren't number, I'm just saying. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and set this up. The, the rider on this particular bike is about 135 pounds. He likes a softer spring pull, but this bike with the power it makes is gonna have to have really tall gearing to keep it on the ground in first. So I'm gonna go ahead, in a super stock type application, I'm usually shooting for around 400 pounds total. I know, I've done my homework <laughs> on these springs with that clutch setup. I know that if I go ahead and put the thicker 180 in there, he, it doesn't need any more, that he'll, he'll still be happy with the lever pressure, but we'll have enough clutch so we don't have to about worry about burning up the clutch you know first time out is this what will stay absolutely not he may decide that's too much makes the bike too hard to, to control wheelies he may decide it's not enough if that's the case then we have to make some additional changes um, and the easiest thing for you to do for us to do is just switch from purple springs to green springs they're monsters you can get as much pressure as you want so there's all kinds of ways to do this just do it the way that works best for you i'm going to set him up here and we will just take these like this and it doesn't matter which way the springs go in there aren't very many progressive clutch springs any longer but there used to be the whole idea there was to let them let them compress a little easier initially and then have them stiff later all right this in and off we go let's just go over and put these in now if you have a uh, depending on how much spring pressure you have. And this, it doesn't really matter which way this goes. Some clutches have, uh, are, it, it matters. The only thing that really matters on these, on these bikes are that they get, they lock down, okay? So, and I don't wanna to get too in depth here, but 
if your clutch height, if your stack height is too far, you could run the risk of this falling off. But you can see, I mean, even this far out, when you pull in on the clutch, it's still engaging. So we've got a pretty tall stack height here comparatively. But if we pulled one of these plates out, then we have to worry about these teeth bottoming out and the, and the inner hub bottoming out here. Well, obviously, if that's going metal to metal, it doesn't matter how much spring pressure you have, the clutch is going to slip. So we do all that work for you. You don't have to worry about that stuff. Just figure out what, what you like to do or what works best for you, I guess I should say. Now, sometimes these are a little bit difficult to get started. This, this particular bike isn't too bad, which is nice. Even with my greasy oil-covered Allison oil-covered <laughs> gloves. All right, do I use an impact on these? No, but i tell you what you can do. Just to speed things up, if you're at a racetrack, let's say, use this. All right, guys, so <laughs> the spec on these bolts is six and a half foot pounds. That's just not a whole lot of torque. I'm not gonna mess with my torque wrench yet again. If you want to mess with your torque wrench, feel free as soon as i have one of these uh come out and cause damage i'll grab my torque wrench every time i'm sure so anyway we now have it we have it we're going to go back over here just to make sure we didn't forget one and we are tight so what's left putting this clutch cover back on now i love our boys at bmw they have some fantastic ideas i'm just not a big fan of this one we're going to go ahead and reuse our gasket, uh, having a little bit of oil on it, believe it or not, makes it less permeable, so the chances of it leaking oil are reduced. It's crazy how stuff works. We're going to set that there. Now, this is also the oil will help it somewhat stick to the cover. Now, th this, this, thing is a, this, this thing is interesting. You've got to get that notch and this edge so that when you pull in on the clutch lever it ratchets sort of ratchets this out to pull the clutch plate away the one thing i do like about this new setup on most other bikes and even on the early bmws this is where we would adjust our clutch pusher first there's no adjustment yay so you only have one place to worry about be less apt of to to burning up your clutch because you missed the the uh, adjustment under the cover so anyway the way bmw says you have to do this when you consult das manual is you want to pull this back put this in and, and i want to show you something here this was really tightly precision machined when i got this now if, if you're not going to replace your clutches for you know for ten thousand miles because you're a street rider that's fine for me it was actually starting to gall things up so what I did, I, had, I ended up honing it out and I put a little chamfer here, which makes it easier to uh, fit over top of the pusher. There were also some little sharp burrs. So I, I, took a, I took a file to this and it's really, really hard. It's very difficult to file anything off of it. But you really want the burrs not to be on there because I started, to, uh, I started piling aluminum up in there and if aluminum gets stuck, rolled up obviously your clutch isn't you're not going to be able to put it on the clutch so anyway all right got the gasket on you want the notch facing the rear of the bike the notch in the throw out here it's approximately straight up it's actually turn a little bit and then all we want to do we're going to pull this lever back to about there to allow it to slip in the notch and then it'll turn it'll turn one as we put the clutch on it and it'll or the cover on and it'll engage so Come over here, watch this little notch here. Now you can see, I just felt it go on. So now I just try to keep uh, equal distance here because we've got dowel pins that need to line up. And while I'm simultaneously doing that, I'm also, I sort of turn this backwards, try and get those dowel pins lined up. And it's so difficult because it's gotta go straight on. All right. <laughs> so it went on incorrectly. To test that, I'm gonna take this, just real slow, turn that, I can't budge that. So what that means is that we've missed the engagement point. I'll pull it back here a little bit. All 
All right. Nothing some sweating and cursing couldn't cure. So what we're going to do now, and because this is a different clutch arrangement, this little lever is not going to be in exactly the same spot. It's moved out a little bit. So if I go to try to put it in, I don't have enough, uh, I don't have enough clutch cable. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make sure that this is, is turned all the way back. And then I'm going to get some of this grease off my hand. I'm going to come over here to the clutch lever and I'm going to manually adjust it in. And I'm going to just adjust it in as far as it'll go. All right. So it's all the way in. Make sure the cable is forced all the way in. Sometimes they get pulled out and that'll cause you grief when you go to try to put the cable back on. Okay. We've got as much adjustment, as much play in the cable as we can get. Now we need to try to slip this end back in and it's just a little on the tight side. Now notice, I still don't have the bolts in the cover yet. I want to make sure that this is going to work correctly before I go putting everything entirely together. This seems a little hokey, but bear with me. You may have to take a wrench and sort of move the mechanism forward so that you can put the end of the cable in the holder. Now, if, Brack, if you're moving it forward, you can't have enough play in the cable. That's just for the install. You can see here, we have plenty of free play in the cable. We'll start, we'll start here. Just go by hand, adjust this in. All right, and we want, we've got to have free play in the cable. We'll adjust the rest of it out up there. But what I want to do first, I want to make sure that when I pull on this clutch, it feels like it's supposed to. I'm a, I'm going to ask the camera to move around here. So when I pull it on the clutch, it should be smooth all the way. And you can see I got, I got a bunch of, I got a bunch of free play here. Let me just take some of that out. Smooth all the way in. Now it's going to be stiffer. We, we stiffen this clutch up pretty good, but it should be the same amount of tension all the way to the bar. If you have a coil bind problem, what happens is you put all the right amount of tension in or you take your free play out right we usually run it and and this will really be where the, the clutch engages where the rider chooses they want it to be set um, but with it set that way all the way to the bar nice and smooth if you have coil bind as soon as you get near the end of the travel it'll all of a sudden get really really stiff well, it did get stiff because you squished the spring solid. So instead of a spring, you basically got a metal spacer in there. If that's the case, you've got to go back off, take your cover off, and remove some shims so that it's nice and smooth all the way to the bar. For our final trick of the evening, we give you some handy-dandy NECs. Now, if you're like me, you will find this stuff on your hands, on your clothes, <laughs> out of the blue from now until the end of time but because uh, the the original bolts were throwaways we put a little anti-seize on here before we put them in and just uh before we tighten them up do you need to do it nah but if we told you you didn't need to do it and you stripped one of your bolts then we're bung holes so we're just going to go this route and it doesn't take much and what, honestly, we put these on Christine in 2010, and that clutch cover's been off hundreds of times, and I haven't even reinstalled it. What was there was seemed to be good enough. This was, hey, there it is, everywhere. All right, there we go. Now, do the same thing. As a general rule, when you torque something, you start from the inside and move out. When it's round, you know, it's not real easy to do that. And these covers don't, don't really much care. Yet again, torque spec on the bolts is six and a half foot pounds. We're gonna make them good and tight. We'll just go and get them close. We'll finish them off by hand. And using sort of an X kind of pattern here. Oops. There we go. Wipe it 
and seize off of everything. All right, now I'm just gonna go around these and torque them to where they need to be. These damn gloves. As you can see, I completely abandoned the cross pattern because yet again, <laughs> as soon as I have it matter, I'll let y'all know. But if you wanna do it the right way, follow, follow the, uh, from the inside out. So anyway, okay, we've got it tightened up. So what we're gonna do, because there's so much oil on the clutch, and I've done this in other past videos, uh, I'm gonna leave the free play I had in the lever. I had a little bit of free play in there. And I'm gonna go out, do a couple dry hops to get the oil off of it. Then I'll finish my free play adjustment and we'll be ready to go to the drag strip. For reference, these are the parts that you will no longer be needing, right? Bolts, studs, little plate, this deal. <laughs> if you have more parts than this, check under the cover, you did something wrong. So, what's next? Oh, I don't know. Chassis, gearing, fuel management, air filter, worldwide bearing, ceramics. I mean, all the things that we did in our Jixilla series, just take Suzuki off the tank, put BMW on the tank, and it's the same time. It's the same concept. <laughs> Although, this bike has some strange things going on in the suspension area that I've never dealt with before. That doesn't matter. You know how we do it. We'll get it figured out. We'll have this thing fully adjustable and squeaking over the minimum ground clearance uh, pole or post that they use uh, when you go drag racing. So until next time, I'm Brock from Brock's Performance. We'll see you then.